Welcome on board the news track. I'm Rahul Kamal here is wishing all our viewers a very happy Dashara. We're tracking the Home Minister's Mission Kashmir on the show tonight. Home Minister's big message for Jammu and Kashmir. Shah says won't talk to Pakistan. जिन्होंने सत्तर साल तक यहां राज किया वो लोग सलाह देते हैं पाकिस्तान से बात करो मेरा स्पष्ट मत है मैं पाकिस्तान से बात करना नहीं चाहता कॉन्ट्रास्ट गुपकार मॉडल विद मोदी मॉडल युवाओं के लिए गुपकार मॉडल में क्या है पत्थर है बंद कॉलेज है हाथ में मजीन कर नरेंद्र मोदी मॉडल में क्या है आया है State set for elections in JNK. Shah's mission Kashmir, big focus on news track. On the last day of his three-day mission Kashmir, Home Minister Amit Shah was in the terror hotbed of Baramulla. The Home Minister addressed a rally in the valley, drawing a clear comparison with the Gupkar model and the Modi model of governance. Shah declared that while many want him to talk to Pakistan, he would rather talk to the people of the valley. Making a symbolic point without a bulletproof shield, Union Home Minister Amit Shah addressing a rally in one of Kashmir's biggest hotbeds of terror, Baramulla. A repeat of what he did last year in Srinagar while on his first visit after the abrogation of Article 370. Amit Shah's public meeting on the third day of his visit to Jammu and Kashmir was the BJP's biggest show of strength in a town hit by terror several times in recent days. Amit Shah launched a scathing attack against the Gupkar Alliance. The group of Kashmiri political parties that include the Muftis and Abdullahs were seeking restoration of Jammu and Kashmir's special status. <laughs> जो विकास, शांति, सद्भाव और रोजगारी देता है और एक गुप्कार मॉडल है। गुप्कार मॉडल ने क्या दिया? पुलवामा का अटैक करा और आज मोदी जी ने क्या करा? पुलवामा में 2000 करोड़ के खर्चे से अस्पताल बनाने का काम किया। Amit Shah asserted that Prime Minister Modi had made democracy possible at the grassroots levels in the valley with the abrogation of Article 370. <laughs> Ahead of the rally, the Home Minister chaired a meeting of the Unified Command in Jammu and Kashmir in Srinagar. Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha, top officers of the Army, paramilitary forces, state police and civil administration took part in this high-level meet. The visit has come under criticism from the opposition. Former JNK Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti posted a photo of the locked gate at her residence, alleging she was placed under house arrest during the Home Minister's visit. The JNK police rejected the claim, saying the PDP chief was free to travel and posted a photograph showing the gate locked from the inside. With Himanshu Mishra in Baramulla and Ashraf Wani in Srinagar, Bureau Report, India Today. 
Home Minister Amit Shah in the Terra hotbed of Baramula gave an account of the government's achievements after the abrogation of 370. Just how does the government's report card score? Also, the government seems to be laying the ground for elections after the electoral roll exercise is completed. If there are elections in Jammu and Kashmir, what is the likely political scenario that could emerge? To talk about this and more, I'm joined on the news track. Uh, on the day of the Shara by Lieutenant General Sayyad Atta Hasnain, former General Officer Commanding of uh, the 15 Corps in Srinagar. We have uh, Yashwan Deshmukh, uh, the lead cephologist at Seawater. And for political uh, perspective on this broadcast, I am joined by Imran Nabi Dar, uh, spokesperson of the National Congress uh, Conference. We've got Rajinder Singh Chib, General Secretary of the Democratic Azad Party. Ravinder Sharma, spokesperson and leader of the Congress, and Shahzad Punawala from the BJP. Uh, is the Home Minister setting the stage for elections to be held in the Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir? What could be the scenario that emerges, Shahzad Punawala, in the comments the Home Minister made in Baramula this morning? Uh, he seemed to be laying the grounds for elections after the final voter list is prepared, which we are told is heading towards its completion. So does that mean that once this winter gets over, sometime in the early part of the second year, possibly with Karnataka, that Jammu and Kashmir could go to polls as well? Is that your plan? Rahul, first of all, a very happy Vijay Dashmi to all your viewers. And what is Vijay Dashmi? It is the battle and the fight and the victory of good over evil. And if you see, after the abrogation of Article 370, we have been able to make DDD prevail over PPP. DDD being democracy, decentralization and development over Pakistan Parasti, Parivarwad and Patharbazi. Today, look at the transformation. And we are not heading just towards an election. Of course, election is an important part of the DDD deepening of democracy, but look, the transformation that has taken place after the abrogation of Article 370. First, democracy, Jamhuriyat, was not till the Jameen. It was only till three parivars. Only six MPs and 87 MLAs would get elected. Today, we have 30,000 people, whether it's the Sthaniya Chunav, whether it's the uh, Tehsil Chunav, whether it's the Pranchayat Chunav, whether it's the BDC, DDC, all of these have taken place and 30,000 elected officials are now today controlling the fate of Jammu Kashmir. First, we had a terror hotspot where we had so many uh, events of Atankwa taking place. Today it's become a tourism This year has seen the highest number of tourists in the last 70 years. First it used to be about Vibhajan. Today it is about Vikas. In 70 years we had 15,000 crores of investment. Today alone after the abrogation of Article 370 we've seen 56,000 crores worth of investment coming in. So this transformation will only happen when an ecosystem of normalization is created. And Rahul, something that is close to your heart, Hindi movies are finally being screened in the Ghati as well. So you can see the transformation that has taken place from Patharbaji and Pakistan. Pakistan Parasti, today these Algawadis who used to control the narrative of Jammu Kashmir, today Yasin Malik has been convicted, today you have okay. the likes of uh, Salahuddin and their children taken out of government jobs, you have had the back of the Huryat broken and you have today got the people of Jammu Kashmir, the Awam of Jammu Kashmir becoming a stakeholder and obviously an important part of that process will be further elections and let me just give you a final example. For so many decades, communities were given, not given their rights. Whether it was the Valmiki Samaj, whether it is the women, or whether it is the Pahadi Samaj. The Pahadi Samaj was recommended to get the status of ST in the 1989 cabinet, but they were denied, and the Congress party and the NC, which had the opportunity to rule so many years and decades, never gave the Pahadi Samaj. Today, the Gujars, the Bakarwals, and the Pahadi Samaj, all of them will get their right. Okay. This is the so, transformation. It's not just about election. My father commanded uh, an army regiment near Baramula. This has for the longest time been a terror hotbed and General Hasnan, there is political symbolism. The Home Minister of the country on the day of Vijay Dashmi Dashera in Baramula talking about an ecosystem of normalization. How much of this in your view is the new reality? How much of this is political spin? See Rahul, first of all, uh, my greetings to everyone on Vijay Dashmi. Uh, yes, very interesting question you ask, and I remember the time when your father was there, and later when he commanded a brigade in the same district in Gurez. Gurez formed a part of Baramulai at that particular time. On 5th of August 2019, if someone had told me that this is going to be the situation three years hence, 
I may not have entirely believed it. Uh, I would have said, yes, possibly we'll arrive at that situation somehow, we'll parachute into that situation, we'll create an artificial kind of uh, environment of uh, safety and security. But I am uh, pleased to report today that my ground uh, knowledge, uh, outreach to the people, etc., tells me that a tremendous amount of uh, work has been done on the ground. A tremendous amount of outreach has been done on the ground and preparedness has been done on the ground. So what is being spoken at Baramula today is not something entirely hollow. It is a, a lots and lots of work has gone into it, particularly the engagement with the people and different segments of the people. As very correctly said by Pulavar Saab, that uh, different segments of people in Kashmir, particularly the youth, which is the most important segment as far as national security of Kashmir. But the only way to really gauge that is when there's an election, General Hasnain. Then Absolutely, you know whether these youngsters you. actually I show up to vote. You can attempt to engage I, them, whether they'll come out and Arunda. vote in uh, Rahul, the election let, let, when let, we let, know whether they actually feel connected with the Indian system. Let, let me just complete, Rahul. Yes, you are absolutely 100% right. Uh, we can't keep prevaricating on this. Obviously, these frequent visits of the uh, Honorable Home Minister are good. They send a message and they carry a message back equally. I think equally is discussed in Delhi also. The Honorable Home Minister is a hands-on man. He likes to get a first-hand report. He's going to attend the Unified Command meeting today, I think. He was already probably attended it getting inputs from every possible agency. So the, the, uh, the uh, problem which people were looking at, perceiving that this, this may be a little too early that we are moving, perhaps the perception today in my mind which is prevailing is perhaps the right time is just about coming. Geopolitically, we are prepared internationally to send home the right message. The integrated process is almost complete. Politically, yes, it's a challenge. There's a lots and lots of groundwork still to be done. But I suppose we have to complete it. We have to take a decision to get into it. Even if there's 30% voting, 20% voting, we must go for it. Yashwan Deshmukh, what's your best sense at this moment? If elections were to be held, what do you think could be the picture that emerges in these 90 seats that have been created after uh, the completion of the delimitation exercise in Jammu and Kashmir? What's the next government of the Union Territory likely to look like? Well, Rahul, uh, first of all, happy Dashera to everyone. And uh, uh, as a professional, Rahul, Kashmir is very, very special for me because I take really pride that I happen to be the first pollster to ever conduct an opinion poll in Kashmir. And that was way back in the mid-90s. And I remember that when we were doing the first ever election poll in Kashmir, uh, the lead of that story was that 82% in the valley fear that the polls will be rigged. That is where we started the lack of trust in the entire process of democratization and the feeling of being anti-Delhi, anti-India in the valley at large. But today when I look at it and today when I look at the numbers, I genuinely believe that it is the turnout and turnout alone which we have been witnessing all, already on the rise in the local body, in the local elections over there. Uh, that is going to decide the way uh, uh, 370 has impacted a lot. One thing which I really want to underline, Rahul, here is the debate on the delimitation which uh, some of the politicians from the valley have been presenting as if it's a gross injustice to the valley, which is absolutely not the fact. That's an utter lie. Reason being, Rahul, because of the 370, none of the delimitation exercises were done within the Kashmir state of Jammu and Kashmir, and the seats in the Kashmir Valley were wrongly skewed in favor of the valley, while the population balance was always in Jammu. So it was the lack of delimitation, which kind of skewed more seats for the valley and lesser seats for the Jammu, which was not the case after 370 when the delimitation was done. So it is now done correctly. You know, it has, uh, uh, remove that gross injustice that the uh, region of Jammu has been facing for a really long time. Having said that, Rahul, the overall equation in uh, Jammu and Kashmir is still remains very keen because we, we will still, whenever it is said as a, it is declared as a full state, it will be state of Jammu and Kashmir. But largely speaking, these two regions actually behave like two different states. 
or for obvious uh, historical reasons and the demographic profile as we know it. So when you look into Jammu Rahul, you will still figure out that the prime contest would be between BJP and the Congress, where BJP might have a very uh, strong upper hand at this point of time. But in the case of Valley, it is likely to be a, likely to be a multipolar contest, and particularly with the new entry of uh, um, uh, of Gulam Nabi Azad Saab's party, it would be really interesting to see whether the uh, whether the Valley voters is still get by polarized between the two old parties of National Conference and PDP, or they 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 look for new alternatives, and that is going to decide which way it is going. Because Ranjit. BJP, even if it sweeps the entire Jammu region, Rahul. Is unlikely to cross the majority mark. Rajinder Singh, own, Chib, even if they now sweep that's the, the question. Entire this is where the role of the Democratic Azad Party becomes so crucial. Is Gulam Nabi Azad the Trojan horse for the BJP? Will there be some kind of a post-election truck between Azad's new party and uh, his friend, uh, the Prime Minister? Some of that bonhomie we've seen play out in Parliament. Is that really? what this uh, election is likely to be about, sir? Rahul, uh, first of all, uh, let me wish happy Vijayadakshmi to all the viewers. And to you, sir. And especially to you and uh, all the panelists. Uh, you know, the question which you asked me, uh, I am sure uh, uh, one of the panelists uh, before me, he said that uh, the main contest in Jammu will be between BJP and Congress. I don't agree with that. Uh, ultimately, it is going to be contest uh, between BJP and the Democratic Azad Party. So Congress, uh, after uh, the arrival of Janab Gulam Nabi Azad Saab on the scene in the JNK, uh, I am sure that Congress is nowhere. Uh, it is going to be a keen contest between uh, Democratic Azad Party and the BJP. Uh, secondly, uh, one of the panelists was uh, talking about the delimitation. Uh, he said that uh, delimitation has been done rightly now after the abrogation of 370. I think it will be very unfair to connect everything with the abrogation of 370. And uh, even our Honorable Home Minister he is here for the last three days in uh, JNK, and what I could gather from is the Rajori speech and the Baramula speech. Whatever whatever development has taken place in JNK, he has connected with the abrogation of 370, which is totally wrong. No, so my for question example, was different. You are saying it will be Azad versus BJP. My question was, will it be BJP plus Azad after the elections? No, I am going to come on that. You said. Will there will be any alliance, post alliance after that? I I think we we will not have any alliance, and we have not thought of any alliance with any party in Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, the Democratic Azad Party is going to go alone, independently. Uh, the name you know the name of the party itself Azad doesn't symbolize with Gulam Nabi Azad, but Azad means. Having totally okay. independent approach. That's what PDP and BJP also said before the last elections. And then we saw quite famously what happened between uh, senior Mufti and well, the BJP at that time. But we leave that for another time. Imran Nabidar, well, how are the traditional parties which came under attack from the Home Minister, uh, accusing them of Parivarvad, how are they gearing up for this post-delimitation, post uh, completion of the electoral rolls exercise. Will a party like the NC participate in the elections? How do you think uh, the result could pan out? Uh, see, first of all, let me congratulate you and congratulate you uh, on this auspicious day. Um, uh, coming back to the question, uh, I think it's very, uh, uh, it's very too early uh, to actually make presumptions right now. And uh, as when elections are nowhere in, in sight. I think there is no point talking who will have an act. The point I'm trying to make here is that we have been waiting for the last four years for a democratic process to get going. Unfortunately, that is not happening. At even today, there is no uh, definite date that is. They have just said that there will be an approval and then things will pan out. Um, uh, it was uh, coming back to your second question on Parivarva. Uh, I, I don't understand. I mean, this rhetoric that we have all along, 
about family rule and family rule. Are they trying to say that uh, all these institutions were conducted in elections prior to August 70 were rigged? Are they questioning uh, the Election Commission of India? Are they trying to say that all those elections were past elections? People voted for them, whether it was Umar Abdullah who became the chief minister or uh, Dr. Farooq Abdullah or earlier uh, question Mokhuzla there, Mokhuzla Imran Mokhuzla. Dar, will be whether people in Kashmir, whether youngsters will participate or not in this election. How do you, the big claim of the Home Minister was that things are better post 370, that uh, people in Kashmir feel that things are getting better, there is deeper engagement, all of that will get tested when this election happens. No, obviously, no, the point I'm trying to make here is that I think it has no, it has no basis, this statement of Parivar was, what basis is it? I mean, it is not that Umar Abdullah himself became the chief. He was elected. People voted for it. People voted for Dr. Farooq Abdullah. And all the institutions that you see growing right now, who laid the foundation for these institutions? The institutions have suddenly not cropped up over the last, uh, over two, uh, of the last four months or so. People, and then it were it was National Conference government, or the PDC government, or other governments. They worked for these institutions, and that is why you see all these institutions hiding right now. As far as reservations are concerned, whether it is Gujar Bakarwal or Pahari, I, if I want to inform your viewers that it was during Dr. Farooq Abdullah's tenure, that he was the chief minister. He had recommended, uh, he wrote to uh, then Prime Minister uh, Indira Gandhi uh, the, at that time, and it was after his recommendation that. Uh, uh, Pujar Bakarwal will give uh, reservation. And for your information also, it was during Umar Abdullah's tenure that 4% reservation on the basis of Pahari PST was given when Umar Abdullah... Okay, Ravinder Sharma, where does the Congress stand on this issue of elections? We're hearing from Gulam Nabi Azad's new party. They think it will be a, a democratic Azad versus BJP election. Is that the way that you see it? Or do you think that Azad is now hand in gloves with the BJP? See, first of all, Congress has already debated that elections should be held as early as possible since 2018, June. Jammu and Kashmir is without democracy. They had a unholy alliance and a North Pole, South Pole government which utterly failed in their experiment and they destroyed Jammu Kashmir. And thereafter, they resorted to governor rule and then brought uh, the historical state into UT. And uh, now we are under left in governor rule. Since then, we have been demanding that let the government go for elections. Why do you deprive a state, full-fledged state, from the democratic exercise? We are ready for elections. Everybody wants elections, but the, the demand is restore statehood. You have committed on the floor of the House earlier also. Where was the need to downgrade, divide and downgrade the state, historical state, you had a political agenda of abrogation of Article 370, but the question Shazad, is... Shahzad, the Home Minister has promised that statehood will be restored. The question is when? Will that happen before yes. the elections? Will it happen after the elections? All the valley parties will demand that uh, statehood be restored before elections. It is not only the valley part uh, parties. Rahul, if I may. Everybody wants restoration of statehood. When will statehood be restored? May Shahzad I respond? Kunawala. Yeah. Rahul, uh, look, uh, may I respond? Let's speak one at a time. Are Rahul, you, look, are you, are you uh, Rahul, can I that? please? Uh, Rahul, I won't be able to speak if he's going to continue to talk. Rahul ji, is it my time? I do not. Uh, there is some confusion. Ravinder ji, you've just spoken. I'm coming back to you in a moment. I've asked the okay. question that you asked to Shahzad Punawala of the BJP. When okay. will statehood be restored, Shahzad? Look, Rahul, these are decisions that are going to be taken in due course of time because there is obviously administrative and other issues that have to be factored in. And therefore, once a commitment has been made in Parliament, the steps will be taken towards that direction. But having said that, let me make a couple of points that are very important. First of all, look at who's talking about democracy in Jammu Kashmir. The Congress party, whose own Home Minister and former Finance Minister has acknowledged that one of the elections was rigged. This is their Home Minister and former Finance Minister who said it in the public domain. Secondly, the Congress party just spoke about about the reservations. Let me tell you what kind of uh, things they and Farooq Abdullah did. In 1989, the cabinet had recommended Pahadi's 
Bakarwals and Gujars to be put in the ST category. Uh, at that time, I think it was Mr. Pilot who only put the Gujars and the Bakarwals, and it was not a complete uh, 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 articulation of that status also because a lot of the central laws that apply to the tribal community never applied. For instance, the atrocities against tribals and uh, scheduled castes was never applicable because of Article 370. Today, it is the Justice Sharma Committee which has recommended the uh, status for scheduled tribes even for the Pahadis, and that is being moved. And let me tell you what else has been done. For the first time after the delimitation process, nine seats are reserved for the scheduled tribes, of which six are in the Peer Panjal area. So this is the kind of representation but that you is being spoken of. answering my question. When is the right time to restore statehood in Jammu and Kashmir yeah. before or after the elections? Look, Let Rahul, we are, uh, one second, Rahul, these are administrative matters where a large number of stakeholders are involved. For a spokesperson of a political party to announce a decision that should ideally be coming through parliament or through made in parliament would be quite haughty of me. But I am telling you that my party is committed, as has been spoken in parliament, that we are ready to give all the rights that the state deserves. And the more important question, Rahul, that needs to be asked is that when Jammu Kashmir had the full status as a state, what did these three and a half families do? What did they do? Let me give you one instance. Which was, wh why did they not make the scheduled tribe status for Pahadis okay. when between 2005 so and you had Mr. Kulam Nuti Azhar as the chief minister pretty much and a then you had Omar Abdullah as the chief minister? As was the abrogation of Article 370. So General Hasnain, if you were to look at it from a political security perspective, when would be the right time for uh, statehood to be restored? Do you do it after completing a successful election? Do you do it before going in for the polls because that would encourage more people to come out and vote? See, uh, Rahul, I know we've been talking about the administrative inputs to take this final decision. But I personally feel this decision was taken on the 5th of August for a particular purpose. That was, to, to, to my mind, the restoration of stability to assist the government of India, the central government of India, to ensure that it had its hand in ensuring the stability and security of Jammu and Kashmir to hope finally democracy was returned again. To my mind, that process should be completed once the elections are complete, once the election, the government is in place, and then suitably a message can be sent out that restoration of a statehood has been, has been done. So to my mind, it's a post-election. That the, I mean, asking me in black and white, it's a post-election decision and action which should be taken because before that if you do it prematurely and you cannot complete the democratic process for any reason whatsoever it may not be correct yashwan deshmukh is there any way at all of knowing the level of participation we could see in an election uh, which is held sometime early next year participation especially in parts of uh, north kashmir has traditionally been low would it fall even further, at what level would you determine that electoral process to be a success? Well, uh, I genuinely believe, uh, you know, Rahul, looking at the numbers, of course, I mean, participation in election po election exercise and participation in only opinion polling is two, are two different things. But uh, I can, what I can tell you from my own experience is that, uh, that the response rate from the valley also has been quite good in all of our surveys, as in the case of Jammu. So I am expecting... So are you uh, surveying that, uh, even now in Jammu and Kashmir? Do you want to tell our viewers just broadly without getting into specifics what you're picking up? That, that's exactly what I'm doing. Because you know that we do the, our trackers almost on a daily basis all across India. And I, what I can tell you from my experience and my team's experience is that uh, that the response rate has, I mean, in our, our exercises has been quite good, which which kind of tells me that people are actually keen to 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 take part in the democratic process. There there are of course there are issues there which which will remain there. You know, Rahul, it's a historical historically speaking, it's quite a big fault line out there, uh, which will take its own time to heal. But uh, uh, I guess the once the 370 is done and dusted, uh, people are also looking at the opportunity to move on. And that thing is something which will happen only when the when the when the statehood is uh, retained and the and the electoral process starts. I guess that people are kind of keen to get move 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 over and you know proceed so for whatever the next thing they can calls do. There. Do you restore statehood before elections because that will get more people to come out and vote, or after elections, which would possibly be the more calibrated fashion, but that would impact. 
uh, the number of people showing up to vote, to what extent has the abrogation of Article 370 actually been a success, how much of this is spin doctoring and how much of it is uh, people feeling that their lives are better. You know, not just uh, in terms of government claims, but in terms of how people feel and their connection with the mainland. Those are things which will get validated in some way by the number of people who show up to vote in these elections that happen. The Home Minister indicating uh, that this could happen after the electoral rolls are completed. Uh, I want to thank all our guests. We'll keep tracking the electoral process as it builds up towards uh, the beginning of next year. A big, a big move this, to go to Baramulya. Uh, seen for a long time as a hotbed of terror on the day of Vijay Dashmi, uh, sending out this message about his report card, what the government has done and about the road forward on the elections. Last night on the news track, we exposed how the Pakistan-based Dawat-e Islami has spread its tentacles in India, running radicalization operations in the garb of offering online courses. The explosive investigation became a national talking point coming in for high praise from top government officials and experts. India Today is the channel of real impact. کہ خدا کی راہ میں مارے جائیں انہیں مردانہ کہو بلکہ وہ زندہ ہیں وطن عزیز پاکستان ہمارے لیے بہت بڑی نعمت ہے اس کی تعمیر میں ہم سب کو حصہ لینا چاہیے اے کاش ہمارا ملک حقیقی معنوں میں اسلام کا مضبوط کلعہ بن جائے a probe that exposed the Indian footprints of a radical Pakistani organization. Today, Muslims are still in the midst of the darkness. Every side of the sin is the darkness. And non-Muslims have been forgiven us. If there is no one who gives us, then the world gives us. The picture of the future is reducing. A Karachi-based organization linked to the beheaders of Udaipur tailor Kanhayalal. India today penetrated deep into Pakistan's dawat e islami and unraveled something seriously disturbing. Dawat e Islami's well oiled structure in India with bank accounts, local mobile numbers, and men on the ground. Our probe has drawn praise from the country's topmost strategic defense cyber experts and members of civil society. Rahul, uh, at the very outset, uh, compliments to your reporter uh, for uncovering this. Um, I really wish it wasn't your reporter, but uh, an official agency of the government which had actually uncovered it. But I think these days journalists are doing a better job of getting this kind of information than the spooks are. Our probe blew the whistle on Dawat Islami's sinister propaganda in India, carried out by borderless technology and aimed at radicalizing Indian Muslims. I uh, personally feel uh, this investigation should have been done by some intelligence agency or the police. Sir, we can also do some We can also do some good stories. Yes, uh, compliment to your team uh, and uh, great work done. The probe alerted civil society about Pakistan's latest tactics. Whatever you have presented today is uh, appreciable and uh, nobody can uh, deny th that this is a fact. Our probe has prompted calls for a full-fledged investigation by central agencies into dawat e islamis operations in India. Your illustrious and a very competent reporter penetrated the deep web that is dawat e islami and ably penetrated by Muhammad Hezbollah. Compliments and kudos to him. I am sure the intelligence agencies and the police agencies
could have and must have access to them and if they have access to them what are they doing till now a blockbuster expose and an alarm for the country's security establishment a report by india today's special investigative team this is where i wrap up the news track tonight for your time and your trust thank you very much wish you all a very happy dashera i'll see you again tomorrow at 8 pm goodbye good night